Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Welcome to the big dust off. We're going to dust off a record, a dirty record, with a variety of brushes and see which one does the best job. So why do you want to dry brush a record? You want to dry brush a record because records attract dust. They're full of static and the dust gets attracted to the record. Then the dust gets the charge and it's not a good idea to play records that are dusty. So these brushes are designed to remove surface dust. They're not groove cleaners per se. They're designed to attract the dust that's on the surface and pull the dirt up and, and you brush it off. And in the process of doing that, you destat the record at the same time. You don't want to play records that are dusty. And the records come out of the jacket dusty because pressing plants are not clean rooms. Pressing plants are dirty rooms. So let me show you the brushes that I brought along here to show you. The first one is the basic Audio Quest 2995 carbon fiber brushes. It's got two rows of carbon fiber. And uh, this has been improved over the years. If you look carefully, you'll see there's a strip of, of conductive metal right in there. And that helps to uh, destat the record. The original one by Audio Quest did not have that in there. And so it didn't do that good a job of, of destatting the record and pulling the, the staticized dust off the record. So if you have one of these from another brand or you have one uh, from, that's named for, for a product, whatever, uh, look and see if it's got that strip because you want to get one with a strip if this is the kind of brush you want to use. And it has got a nice handle you can use. And it also, um, you can use the handle to clean the brush. You don't want to use your fingers because your fingers are going to be greasy. I don't care how much you wash them, they're going to be greasy. Okay. Okay, that's that's the 2995 Audio Quest. All right, here's the Furtec SK2. It's been replaced by the SK3, but I only have the SK2. It's pretty similar. They made some improvements to it, I guess. But um, this one is $159.99. Now, it looks like a, a simple brush, but it's not. If you look carefully, you can see that there's a surface, right at the surface is this soft goat hair. And then right below that is this acrylic, a firmer, stiffer brush that's acrylic that is also um, coated with a copper sulfide that helps reduce, remove the static charge. So you hold the metal part here that holds the brushes together and you brush it with that and that will destat it and get the dust off the record. That's this one. There's also the ASB one. It's a $220 version that I don't have here, and it supposedly does a better job. I don't know. You can wash and rinse this also. All right, that's the second one. The third one is the Ursa Major, and that is this one, the Ursa Major. This is made in, in Europe, in Germany. And again, it's got multiple rows of carbon fiber, of soft carbon fiber, and uh, it's very attractive. You can get it with a variety of different inserts. You can get walnut, or uh, you can get a black one. You can get it in blonde wood. And it's you know it's nice to have a nice looking accessory next to your turntable as opposed to some pile of junk. So uh, this this Ursa Major is fifty two dollars, and it's got seven rows of carbon fiber. Okay. Next, the Stasis Corporation. Sounds like a soul band from the 70s. The Stasis Corporation. Okay, so this is uh, this can be used dry or wet, and this is um, an ultra fine nylon brush, 0.05 millimeter diameter bristles, very fine bristles that can, that can actually get into the groove. Not all these brushes can get into the groove, and getting into the groove is aside from dancing is more important for uh, wet brushing than dry brushing. Dry brushing, it doesn't have to get into the groove. The idea is not to clean the groove, it's to suck the dirt out, have the static discharge actually pull the staticized dust from the record as much as you can get off, okay? That's this one. This is $29.95. Then we get the, uh, the Acoustic Sounds Big Record Brush. This has been around for a very long time. It's a combination of natural and artificial uh, fibers. This originally was used for photography back when people did photography. Well, some people still do. Uh, and so it was adapted for use as a de-staticizer in records, and it works great. I've had one of these for years. There are two versions. One is uh, $36.95, and then the one with the 
ground wire is uh, $52.99. So you pay a little bit extra for the ground wire. And the ground wire really works. So in the winter when things get really staticky, you connect this to um, to a chassis lug on your on your uh, phono preamp or or to the wall plate, and it it'll discharge the static really effectively, more so than one where you just that's not connected to anything. And that is the acoustic sounds, the big record brush. Okay, the next one we have here is the Levin design. This is uh, made in uh, Germany, and. Uh, it's very beautiful as you can see and this is also made of natural goat hair and it's manufactured for Levin design by a master brush maker and there are master brush makers there are masters of everything and this is made by a master brush maker and this is $335 and a very attractive looking thing I would say all right the next one is the heart audio special source vinyl super cleaner mark three synthetic fiber uh, polyester polyamide and propylene polypropylene brush and this one came out last year and, and uh, the gentleman who manufactured this sent me one sent me this one and it's a simple block of wood with two layers two columns of very fine um, fibers very very fine as you can see and um, some people complained that it wasn't wide enough and it, it wasn't finished to a, an attractive enough looking look for, uh, for them to want to buy it. So he came out with one that was a little bit better finished. The wood is it, it's not like a plain old block of wood. It's got a, a finish to it. It's better. And then he came out with a third one, which is this one, which is basically the same thing but a longer uh, lineup of, of multiple fibers. And... He put plastic things on the side there, so it's full length of a record, which is a good idea. And also, he supplies you with a uh, a protective plastic thing there. So that is the Heart Audio Special Source Vinyl Super Cleaner Mark III. And that costs 24, 24 pounds in the UK. I know, Framer, don't do your British accent. Too bad. 24 pounds for this one. And then um, this one is... 42 pounds if you want the deluxe one okay all right and there's two more we have to show you and um, there's this one this is the black audio micro brush and this is 39.99 and this one is meant to be used uh, as a wet brush that's how they show it but i believe you can also use it as a dry brush and it's a very very fine fibers i think they have a patent on this one or, or trying to get a patent on it they give you two sets of these you peel it off and, and stick it back on with um, self-sticking when this one first one wears out and you get a nice holder and you get uh, a surface to put it on when you want to use it on a wet I wouldn't do this on a turntable I would do it off the turntable because you don't want to get water near your turntable and they don't give you a way to protect your um, label so it, it's you know it's kind of funky and that's that one so maybe you're saying well i don't want to put water all over my records without protecting the label but there's a solution for that too and that is this this is the spindle spinner right here and this is a made in the netherlands and uh it's a you sandwich the record you put the record i'll show you how this works Make believe there's a record in between there. And then you put this on here like this. And what's cool about this thing is, first of all, if, if you're using the, the, the black audio brush, you've now protected the, the label, right? But more than that, when you put this thing down, the record is, is going to sit on an angle so it can be dried. All right, and, and there's a technique involved in using this, and we'll probably, we're not going to do this because you should do this by a sink. You shouldn't do this where your stereo is. But basically what you do is you, once the record's on there, you can easily put, put fluid on it and brush it as many times as you want. You could use this one, or you could use the other wet one, which is this one, and just 
wipe it around as many times as you want, wipe the other side as many times as you want, and you don't have to worry about anything happening to the label. And then you can wipe it dry with a sponge or a microfiber cloth, and then you might want to put another, another a spritz of plain uh, distilled water on it and, and dry it off again with a microfiber cloth. And then you just put it down and let it sit at an angle, because it'll sit at an angle, and let it dry for a half an hour or 20 minutes. And um, it's a neat, a neat idea. And this costs, uh, how much does it cost? I don't remember how much it costs, but I'll have something on the screen to, to show you. So this is the uh, spindle spinner, okay? And then there's one more. There's the Hunt EDA brush, and I don't have one here, but I have something similar that Charles Kermis makes. It's called the Model KAB1. It's similar in that it's got a carbon fiber on one side, and it's got a velvet brush on the other side, so you can do a wet brush or a dry brush kind of thing. And the Hunt actually is a dry brush that has velvet in the middle and two layers of carbon fiber. So, you know, you could do the dry brush first with the velvet and then you could do it with the carbon fiber if you want to do that and that, i don't know how much this costs but this is really supposed to be used for uh vinyl restoration system with his machine but that's that so those are all the various devices we're going to do and now we're going to take a record i'm going to drop it on my dusty carpet put it on a turntable under a bright light, and we're going to try each one of these brushes and see what they do. Okay, here we go. So what I have here is a, uh, this is a Rainbow Records test pressing of something or other, just lying around. I know, I should have records lying around that are test pressing. Kevin Gray cut this, whatever it is. And it was an Audio Fidelity record. I don't know what it is, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop it on the floor like that. Look. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. It's really dusty. Really dusty. Okay. This, is a, this turntable is the Shure uh, SME6 with the classic arm, which I'm, a, I'm about to review, as opposed to the straight pipe. And you can see the dirt all over this record. It's pretty dirty. Now the important thing when using one of these brushes is n not to press down. As soon as you press down and deform the bristles, you're doing it wrong. I've seen so many people do that. They just press down. Everybody's got a different technique for how they want to get the dust off the record. I'll show you the way I do it. So you just touch it. gently and then I like to t put it at an angle and tilt it back and that's what I got off for one one go round there's still plenty of dust on there and that's to be expected because it's a really dusty record so I'm gonna do this twice just to be fair And that's what I got off, okay? Still plenty of dust on it. Now I'm going to drop it on the floor again. And this time I'm going to use the Furatech brush. And I'm going to hold it by the metal part as instructed. I'll give it a double dose since I did it for the first brush. And that looks pretty good. That's pretty good. I think that one did a better job. Sorry my friends at AQ, this this looks like it did a much better job. All right, that's two. All right, here's the Ursa Major with seven rows of carbon fiber bristles. I'm going to very gently kiss the surface of the record.
left a lot of dirt on there, which is fine. And on here, that did a very good, very good job also. Very good job. Next up is the stasis, and this is wet or dry. We're just going to use a dry for now. Gently touch the surface. I'll give it a two for because I did the others with two passes. And that did a very good job too. All right, here's the big brush and I'm not going to ground it this time. I'm just going to leave it hanging. I'll give it two shots. And that's pretty good. Not as effective as some of the others. It's not. It's good. Left more dirt. All right, next up is the Levin Cashmere Goat Hair Brush. And I'll give it I'll give it two passes. did a good job it didn't remove some of the it did a pretty good job I have to say all of the basic surface dust is gone of course this record is going to need to be cleaned on a machine at some point I don't think the people at SME are so happy about this <laughs> but I'll clean it all up I promise Give it two passes. And that is extremely effective. That one is very, very, not only did it get the surface dirt out, but you can, I hope you can see it, but this one actually got a lot of the grittier dirt that was sort of like embedded in the seemed to be embedded in the grooves it's really clean i'm surprised i'm impressed i'm impressed by that one all right now we're going to use the the micro brush the black audio micro brush which i think is meant for wet they're not clear. They don't make it clear uh, whether you can use it for dry, but on this record, I'm going to try it. I'll do it a second, second pass. Got the surface dirt out. It did not get, it did not do as good a job on the inner dirt that the heart got out. 
But I don't think it's meant for this purpose. I think that one's meant for uh, liquid use. This is really dirty now. I hope you can see that. And now I'm going to use the uh, the most beautiful of all. Here it is. And I'll give it two passes. And that does an excellent job too. It's, it's, I would say this is uh, second to the heart, or it's actually as good as the heart. It's very close. Did a really, really good job. Left one here, but that's my fault. And there you have it. I'm not going to do the uh, the Kermis one because uh, that's really meant to be used with his cleaning system and not for dry brushing. So that's it. And uh, and then I will sum it up in print. So that's the big brush off. Thank you for watching.